Good morning, Cushman Dog and Fish TV here. Welcome to a Sunday morning. I would have Silver Serpent here, but she's feeling a little under the weather. We're hoping it's not the Omicron. She's got some natural antibodies. She'd had a battle about uh, four months ago or so with uh, the COVID-1, and it, you know, it was pretty hard for her, even at 14. You know, it, uh, She still has difficulty jogging and you know doing a couple things, but you know, she pulled through it. So we're hoping she feels a little bit better. It's just the common cold, which uh, thank goodness that uh, one floating around now isn't the original Kobe strain. So Anyways, we wish her well and uh, going to kind of go over some products. I'm having some coffee here and waking up. Forgive me. <laughs> if you're having some coffee, let's take a drink. I don't know if anybody else is an NFL fan, but I'm waiting for week 18 to get underway at some point here, even though it's kind of meaningless. Uh, there's a couple games to win and get in, I guess. But uh, I wanted to start real quick with a couple products that uh, are out there. One of them, these are aquarium test strips. Now, if you're buying just the pH test strips, this is what this applies to. Uh, a lot of times you see them, you know, they're eight, nine, ten bucks, and you get like 20, 25 to a bottle, which, you know, if you're like me, you got six, seven tanks, even if you have just one, that can add up a bit if you're doing repeat tests before and then after you do any adjustments, um, like you should be, that can add up. I mean, especially if you're on a budget and uh, even if you're not on a budget and you're, you know, independently wealthy, it is nice to be frugal and, uh, one of the ways that you can save a bit of money just on the pH test strip end of things is using swimming pool test strips. And this is the AquaCheck brand that's out there. I know from being a pool plumber and service tech for years about these. And it'll test uh, your pH and your alkalinity for you. These are the five in ones. You can get a lot of them that'll test hardness for you. It's on a seven in one AquaCheck uh, product that's out there. Um, they're super reliable. They're color coded, just like the other ones. It's pretty, you know, it's not new technology. And the main difference here is price. Right now, I believe you can go and you can find a hundred of these test strips for 10 to 13 bucks. So you can get four times as many of these test strips, um, uh, as you would for just the aquarium test strips, because it says aquarium on it. Right. And uh, you go to Amazon and you can find deals here and there where it's two 100 strip bottles for 20 bucks. And then you're down to 10 bucks. And uh, what it really does for you, in addition to saving money, is if you're trying to make a pH adjustment, um, doing uh, checking out a water source, for example, it's nice. You don't feel like, hey, wow, I'm spending some money here. I got to watch how many test strips or you know, you're always running out. A hundred of these things is going to last you for quite some time. And the seven and ones will tell you the overall hardness of your water, the pH, and so on. And uh, that's a good way to save some money. And that's just kind of a cheap, a cheaper hack there. Um, one of the other ways, and we went on, on anybody who's been watching along with kind of the videos we post. Another good way to save a couple bucks is with the aquarium salt versus just natural unidized sea salt uh, available in grocery stores, Walmarts, pretty much everywhere. If you notice the aquarium salt that's out there, they give you about a handful for four or five bucks, right? $2.37 or 27 cents. I can't remember, but it's a pound. And it's nice. It's widely available. You don't have to go all the way across the store to the, you know, the fish section or go find an aquarium store for aquarium salt. It's available about everywhere you, you shop. I'm not loyal to this particular brand. They have generics or even cheap. You can probably get them a buck fifty. So this just happens to be the one I picked up. And uh, salt's really, really handy. We'll go over a couple things with it. It's nice. You can uh, uh, use it uh, for a dip. Um, you bring in a new fish, for example, from uh, one of the stores. Um, for your quarantine them, if you're worried about any parasites, you can mix this up, five teaspoons. And once again, I would always recommend having 
a measuring spoon set. This is a cheap little $2 set that I had picked up, plastic. And uh, it's always handy to have these so you're not guessing, by golly. Fish can get pretty expensive to just be guessing. But uh, you take five teaspoons, dissolve it in. Um, I just grab some aquarium water from a clean tank, and I'll take about a gallon out. And uh, you can do it with uh, uh, tap water if that's what you use or whatever you use. Uh, make sure it's dechlorinized. And you can put some salt in there, five teaspoons. And put your fish in there for five to eight minutes. Kind of monitor and make sure they're not gasping or any obvious huge distress. Obviously, they're not going to be too terribly happy being netted and put in the salt in, in a separate little bucket. But uh, what it will do is it promotes slime coat. Um, it's also good wound healing as far as if you have a fish with uh, beat up fins, things like that. It's kind of a, it's an antiseptic of sorts. And... Uh, It'll also uh, allow a lot of common parasites to uh, release themselves from the fish. Not all, but it's a good way. Uh, always recommend a backup medication uh, in case you needed it. But a lot of times you find uh, aquarium sea salt or sea salt has been doing wonders for the aquarium hobby for decades. It's not a new thing. But if you're just hearing about it, it's a great thing. I highly recommend having some salt in your aquarium. Fish room. Now, one of the other things I wanted to go over real quick is another product. I really like Sea Kim. Uh, been around a long time. You know, we can argue about the best brands out there, but I think it's a quality product. And I wanted to talk about the Neutral Regulator, which I don't know if you've seen this. But this is also another way to save a ton of money. If you're newer to the hobby or if you just uh, have gotten used to using little pH perfect tabs that are out there, um, different tabs that, you know, hey, you drop it in there, it's perfect. Problem with that being usually if you have a little bit bigger tank, you need several of those things at once and they can add up. They're expensive. They get expensive if you're using just those. This is super concentrated. This is eight ounces of product in here. And you need a teaspoon to every 10 gallons, and that's it. And not only does it adjust your pH down, and you do have to monitor it, um, and it's a teaspoon for every 10 to 20 gallons. Now, I recommend taking your test strips and uh, going half dosage. If you're new to the product, go half dosage on it and then monitor your tank and then add accordingly. Let it sit for a day then come back and monitor it again. Um, but what it also does is it eliminates another product that you would spend money on. Some of the start rights or the tap water conditioners that are out there, this doesn't specifically have a stress coating in it, but most people get these products just to make tap water safe as far as the chlorine goes and get a quick start. This also, in addition to adjusting your pH, removes chlorine and chloramine from the water. So now we have a two in one. Also, what it does is it doesn't remove ammonia, but it solidifies it and makes it not toxic to your fish. And it'll also have a softening effect. So now we have a four in one product. So you can add up the money. If you were to go out and buy, a, I went and looked at a water softening pillow just to wander. I like to wander aquarium stores and see all the products. Um, for example, a small water softening pillow was $10. Um, you're looking at 2 to $4 for a bottle of this. Uh, the pH tabs, you're looking 4 to 5 bucks for a box of those. And never mind the environment and all the plastic containers and the things polluting our landfills, right? This becomes a 4-in-1, which is really, really nice. And we've been using it in the big tank. Here in Arizona, we have massively hard water. Anybody who's lived here, we have one of the heaviest mineralized zones in the country. There's a lot of gold mining, copper mines, a lot of things have to do with hard water coming up through the rock and absorbing those minerals and nutrients and being into the water. Some things it's great for. It's not great for aquarium keeping. You get a lot of hard water scale. A lot of the used tanks that we'll see on offer up, Craigslist, wherever, they have these horrific water stains. And if you look, I picked up this used 20 for 20 bucks <laughs> um, set up, and it had, had massive, massive white stains all the way around. Now I managed to slowly, I'm um, just with some uh, white vinegar. 
Another nice way to clean your tank on the outside. White vinegar, I've slowly managed to get most of this gone off of the front. Now I've still got to work on my back at some point, but admittedly I'm being lazy. But uh, this helps soften some of that. So again, and this product, if you're waiting for it, this cost me $9.99 at one of the aquarium shops. So it is not expensive. And uh, let's say you're just keeping a up to a 55-gallon tank. I would imagine this right here on a weekly basis, um, like it recommends. I can't see it not lasting you six months to a year. And if we could add up uh, the pH tabs, the tap water conditioner, um, any water softening aid that you need. I can't imagine that this isn't going to save you $40, $50 easily just with this. And it's nice. You don't have to store a whole bunch of different products floating around. Um, it's extremely easy to use. And uh, it's a nice heavy duty durable container as well. Now what I do when I'm going to mix it up, for example, I pre-mix. And I do need to treat uh, the big tank up here with the hard water. We we're up over 250 on the hardness count in there, which we're starting to get pretty hard water. Um, and I wanted to drop it down a bit. So what I'm going to do is take some right now. I'm going to take a teaspoon right here. And as always, level it off so that you're precise. There's no room for Cousin Johnny and guessing with a lot of these things. You, gotta, you want an accurate form of measurement so you can duplicate it. And I pre-mix it. Now that tank behind me, I'll show you our angel tank is a 60 gallon tank. Now I've made an adjustment uh, day before yesterday actually I made an adjustment on it and uh, I had gone half strength and it dropped me about 80 points on the hardness. So what I'm going to do is add three more teaspoons and try to get this thing down quite a bit. There we go. And obviously anything that hits the water over here with these angelfish, they're beautiful, but they are beggars. And they will absolutely go after eating this powder on the way down. Which, I don't know if it's toxic for fish or not, but it, it bugs me. I don't like that idea. So I'm going to take it and just kind of pre-mix it. Mix it up a bit, and like I said before, it eliminates chlorine, chloramine, so you don't have to worry about it uh, putting any straight water in. And it's such a small amount in here. I've got uh, a little camo, these hardware buckets. You know the cheap one if you're buying expensive buckets or containers. You get paid five bucks for this thing. It's got a nice little green handle. I'm going to go ahead and pre-mix that. Sorry, I like to get my hands on, on the water and the products. And let's go ahead and turn this laptop around. And I will put it in the big tank. You guys can see the begging angel fish here. And the tank's doing really, really well. You can see the angelfish already coming up to the front to beg on this thing. And they are absolute beggars. So is the discus here. A little albino melon, juvenile. He has been friendly for Silver Serpent forever. been really happy with the little Chinese algae eaters. They're not bickering there as much. If you follow the stream, they were bickering a bit, the two of them together. But uh, they have absolutely cleaned the front of this Titanic up here. Anybody watching, this was pretty algae soaked. And take a peek at that. 
two teeny tiny ones. You can see one of them working on the stack there. They are not big. They are juveniles, like, uh, you know, probably half the size they're going to get. You can see them bickering. It would appear that the little yellow face sucker is a lot more, you know, of a starting squabbling arguments than the uh, plain Chinese algae here. But uh, they've done a great job. They've cleaned off the two to the uh, power filter in the back on this power filter. Clean the other one off. The glass is coming along. You can see just faint specks on it, but they are doing an absolutely great job. There one swims by. Oh, there he is right there. Doing his job. They're kind of rewarding as an algae eater because you pay money for it. You want to see him working. All right. Well, he's working away. Oh, there's the discus. And the begging red marble angelfish. Again, shout out to the cichlid shack in Tempe. Uh, gave us quality, quality angelfish stock here. We are so excited about breeding these eventually. And they're absolutely gorgeous. We're really, really enjoying them. And they're starting to recover from their trip over. And you can see they're starting to get those nice, long, kind of lace additions to the ends of their fins. So they're super, super healthy. Oh, there's the paradise fish. And there's the spider-shaped moss ball. Silver Serpent had to have. <laughs> I know it's a gimmick, but I am, you got to keep it fun. All right, so we got that added. And what I'm going to do is let that mix in for probably a day. And I'll come back in tomorrow and I'll drop another strip in again. Looking to drop the pH down a bit. It was up into the coming out of the tap. We're at 788, which is getting high. So I know we had dropped it down to 7476. That's still a touch higher than I want. I'm aiming for the 7 to 72 range right in there with these fish. So again, because I'm not paying a fortune for my test strips. Yeah, I think I got 40 or 50 of them left in here. And so I just it becomes a little more enticing to test that thing instead of if you're on a budget going, I've got two test strips left. <laughs> so we'll check it tomorrow and we'll make adjustments and we'll figure out uh, what we need to do. Now, what we've also done to save a little bit of money, just overall, if you're building a fish room out, we're eventually going to have about, uh, uh, we're aiming for 16 to 20 tanks in here. And we'll just come, we'll just keep building up with the cinder block stand that we made and stack up. But uh, what I've gone ahead and done is a couple of the tanks that are critical, like the little uh, baby tank. We do have a, just a, a heater in there that keeps it at at least 78, right? One of the preset models. But what I've done to kind of help out the heaters and not overwork them is I went and got about an $8 space heater. And I use that little space heater to heat the overall room, which in our cultivation days, which we won't go any further into that, but in our cultivation days, we got used to heating the room and keeping an environment as a whole up. So it kind of helps, uh, has the, helps on the, helps with the heaters. The heaters are expensive, definitely for a quality aquarium heater. So they have to turn on and work a little bit less. Now, I also wanted to do real quick, have another sip of my coffee so I can wake up some more. Thanks for the two likes there. Again, if you're just watching the show, we're at 99 subs, which there are guys out there with tens of thousands. That's not us. We're building up, but uh, we appreciate it. Um, remember to share this, get it out there. I do it. We're building a, a really supportive community. I've gotten some feedback from people. It's it's been an absolute it's it's been a joy. So what we're gonna go ahead and do too is go over a platy that I've got in here. And if you're keeping platies and let's say you're new to the trade or to the hobby or you haven't uh, bred them much, and you said, hey, I I really want to you know specifically isolate a female, maybe save some babies. Um, 
we did this is a product I featured in a video, but it's been around for 40, 50 years. The Penplax Aqua Nursery. And if you've ever seen these, want to know, is it a gimmick? No, it's not. It works really, really well. Actually, it's why it, probably why it's been around 40 or 50 years. And uh, we went ahead and I went searching. I was thinking, you know, I used to have one of these things. I wonder if they make them. They absolutely, they make them. And uh, I haven't seen them in the big box stores or anything like that. It's kind of a specialty type of product, right? And I went on Amazon. I think it was $15.99 for this thing. Which, going to the aquarium store, if I go and look for a live bearer trap, I'm going to pay at least that for one that isn't very specialized. Uh, main difference, I have a three-hole right here, which everybody's seen these suction cups stick them to the glass. 15, 16 bucks. It has a couple dividers. You can fit three fish in here. This one, you can put several fish in there. I usually go one at a time. But uh, the difference between this and this, if you look right in here on the bottom of the picture, you can hook an aquarium uh, air pump to it. And with the bubbles rising, it forms a suction. And it will pull the babies from here into this little detachable container, which easily comes off. And you can just put it in a separate uh, area. Makes it really, really nice. And it's kind of fun and rewarding to come in. My daughters really enjoyed coming in and looking. Hey, we have babies. You know, it's like instantly you can see what you've got there, which we really enjoy. So what I'm going to do is take one of these Mickey Mouses that I have, and you can kind of see her. She's a little darker colored one that's right here, floating up front. I'll pull the camera a little bit closer. Again, we're looking at some point here, we'll be able to uh, invest some in a camera. We're kind of looking into that for the laptop here. Still looking for suggestions on, uh, you know, an affordable one that takes good quality that maybe we can move around a little bit instead of flip to the laptop. Any ideas or techies out there? I have no no pride in that. I'm always willing to learn new things. But so what we're going to do is, this is a good way to tell if you're females. Now, right by the rear end here, you notice a dark spot on her. That's the babies moving down. And if you look at the abdomen, they get kind of squared off on the bottom. And you can tell it's a little bit flatter and they're girthy and they're full. And uh, she's about ready to pop. Looks like this girl here is pregnant too, but she doesn't look like, I'm not seeing that dark spot, and she doesn't really have that kind of filled out look to her. This one does over here. So I like to go through and look. Now we have one male, and the rest of them are females in here. And the male is this beautiful hyphen platy. And I absolutely love this, this fish. So we'll get ready to pull her out and put her in the aqua nursery and hopefully within a day or two she spits out some babies but i'll put you guys right up against the tank here and you guys can kind of see it Let's see the female bait in there another great community fish that isn't utilized enough i think female betas have a lot of personality in there i find they're a pretty good community fish now she is a mighty huntress so i have very little doubt that she's picked off any uh, some fry that would make it in this uh, tank but we like to isolate our breeding stock so let me get the other one right here get the aqua nursery ready to go See if we can do this smoothly without scaring the hell out of her. Not a heavily planted tank, but it's planted enough. I think she has ideas that we're coming for. Come on, any time to go to the maternity ward. There we go. 
I like to go nice and smooth with it. No need to destroy your tank or stress them out a whole bunch. And then they can pop immature babies if you stress them out too much, which anybody who's bred live bearers, those, those fry just usually, they aren't going to survive. Or if they do, they're real stunted and you're real sorry. So we popped her in the nursery. So we went ahead and put her in the nursery tank over here. And you can see the little breeding trap in the corner. Looks like she gets sliding down a bit here. That's all right. So it gets running and ready to go. So hopefully we'll come in in a day or two and she'll have, oh, you guys can see the fry in there swimming around. They're getting big enough. They'll show up on the camera a little bit. They're not almost a figment of your imagination. They're so small, right? But uh, I'll pull the camera up here, pull the laptop up real close so you guys can see them. They're doing really, really well. You can start to see some of the colors on, on uh, these fry. And kind of start to get an idea of, hey, wow, that's a really healthy one. You can also see the ones that are a little bigger and a little more vigorous, too. And again, we modified our power filter. You can see the aquarium sponge we carved out and put up over the intake tube. And that's a Penguin 150, which I really like. The, uh, the Marineland Penguin filters and the Emperors. And I'm just really a fan. And it looks like, yep. Yeah, let me do a quick count here. I got three. That again can be a maddening endeavor counting fry in here. But I'm counting the same 17 in, in here. They all seem to be doing pretty well. Haven't suffered any losses. And we're keeping our tank 80 to 82 right in there for the fry. I might drop them down just a bit. Um, Probably the next week to two weeks. Platys, I find like it a little bit cooler than 82. You know, 76, 78 right in there. Looks like we've got a really nice, a couple of them that are almost like a Dalmatian pattern. Almost like a Dalmatian molly pattern. Which is breeding platies, uh, a lot of times it's uh, interesting what you get that comes out, even out of what you think is a stable female, right? Female male breeding pair. They can throw you for a loop. And we did have another new addition to the uh, fish room. This is our quarantine tank over here, which if you don't have a quarantine tank, I can't stress enough how important it is to have a quarantine tank, especially you know, even if you're shopping from a guy, a person that you trust, you never know. Everybody's human. Anybody can miss something, and it can devastate an aquarium, especially if it's live plants. And it really sucks going in there and seeing your fish sick. So we bought a spotted hyphen placostomus, just a little, little a smaller juvenile, and we're going to use them in some of the smaller tanks here um, until he gets a little bit bigger. And then we'll put him in uh, uh, with the Oscar in maybe six, eight months when he gets quite a bit bigger. But so we have him isolated in the quarantine tank. Um, I, I gave him, some people are controversial that I gave him a, a light. We're talking like a two-minute dip in a salt bath before I put him in. And uh, uh, we have, uh, just in case, we have ick medication in here. We have a three-in-one in here, which kills uh, some of the parasites, bacterial, plus some ick. And you can see the water stain just a bit. But uh, we're going to leave him in here for about five to seven days and uh, run a complete treatment so that he's clean. We do have breeding tanks set up over here. There is, uh, And if I decide to put him in the fry tank over here to uh, help clean that one up a bit, I don't want to take any chance in a fry tank. Um, they're much more sensitive and susceptible to treatments and diseases for obvious reasons. So again, I can't stress enough. Now, all the carbon is pulled out of the filters. It's a submersible that has some filter floss in it, right? To do a little water polishing, catch some of the big debris. Keeps the water crystal clear, 
but uh, again, no carbon in there that's uh, activated that's going to pull the medication out. But uh, you can kind of see him swimming around in there. He looks really healthy so far. Um, and I inspected the tank he came out of. There were no dead fish, no obvious signs of sickness. Um, a lot of times you go to the pet store and depending on the pet store, if it's a great aquarium store, they're in there routinely netting out any dead fish and they'll quarantine and put an X on the tank usually. Um, this particular store didn't have a practice of doing that. Um, thus, the even more critical importance of quarantining this fish. Um, it came from one of the P stores, big box stores. So I am absolutely just completely careful with fish that come from any place like that. But in that particular tank, there were no dead ones. And, you know, it looked like a fairly healthy tank. But looks, let me repeat, looks can be deceiving when it comes to that. There he is, sucking away on the glass. Well, move you guys back here. So you can kind of see our setup as it sits. We've got three tens, and then we've got a female beta sitting in here, and we've got a 60 behind us. And, uh, and then there's the uh, tank downstairs as well with Rambo, the Oscar in it. So that kind of concludes, I guess, what I wanted to go over today. And once again, I wanted to give a shout out to the Sickwood Shack and really pump up this food extreme. Which, if you haven't checked this out, this is the Community Crave, which is uh, the spirulina and the krill 50-50 in here. The fish absolutely go nuts. The colors are intense. And, uh, hey, it's a nice big enough jar. I don't have to worry about for a long time going out and buying uh, fish food. So, once again, get yourself some, uh, want to save a little bit of money? Try some of these aqua chick uh, test strips. These are the five and one, the seven and one have a total hardness and uh, other parameters that you can check in there. Um, mainly just for pH, if you're just really quickly checking pH, um, these are really, really handy. They don't have the nitrate and uh, ammonia features, any of that in them, but for strictly just checking pH, hey, here you go. 100 of these things for under 20 bucks. It's hard to beat that price tag. And then again, this is a big money saver of the week right here. Neutral regulator. Now, it'll do some things, like I said, it uh, drops your pH for you. Um, and uh, you do need to monitor it. It's not going to be, you know, it just goes to a 7 and that's it. You do need to monitor it. But once you get it worked out on your particular tank of, hey, want to do my weekly? Because I'm sure we're doing our water changes. Um, either week or whenever you feel that your aquarium is due. I'm a fan for uh, checking and when, uh, and you get an idea with your tank as it ages how often you need to do your water changes. Some people say weekly. I'm not necessarily into that. Um, with multiple tanks in here, I like to be on a regimen and I just go in and boom. I know it's water change day and I just do water changes, right, and get it knocked out. Um, but this will drop the pH, soften the water a little bit for you. It solidifies and detoxifies the ammonia that's in there. Um, and it also removes chlorine and chloramine. So it saves you. It's kind of a four-in-one, super concentrated. I paid like 10 bucks for this container and it's eight ounces of this stuff. So I would highly recommend. I know you can buy it uh, at aquarium stores. Uh, shop your local fish store um, if you can. If they're competitive, I always say... Uh, um, I'm a fan of the Aquarium Co-op podcast. If something's, you know, 25, 30% more at the store versus online, I have a hard time justifying that. I'm, uh, I'm on a budget. I wish I could. But if it's within, you know, a reasonable range for you and you're already there, you might as well pick it up. If not, this is available on Amazon and some other places too. And it's, uh, it's a great product. So once again, thanks for the all the support. Um, we've gone up quite a few subscribers in the last month or so. And uh, for us, that's a lot. Um, we're small enough that we, are, I guess, still appreciate every individual subscriber. So we're sitting at 99, I think it is, which, hey, who thought that 99 people would enjoy uh, 
tuning in and sharing uh, 20 minutes or so with another fish nerd. So it's a pretty cool deal. So thanks for uh, all the support. Like, share, and subscribe, folks.